Hi everyone, it's Pam with Silver Sparkles, and I am going to um, attempt a how-to video today for you guys to show you how I made these um, cute little uh, junk journal inserts to give you some extra journaling space. So I had these up on my Instagram and my Pinterest recently and got some requests. So these are a tri-fold card. They're made out of 12 by 12 cardstock or scrapbook paper, um, a vintage button, and I do have them layered because the paper I chose is was a one-sided cardstock, and I like that vintage book page look. So I did line these. I'm gonna show you how I did it. So um, first we will talk about the supplies that you're gonna need. So you are gonna need some type of cardstock. You, you actually can make these any size, but mine are the paper ended up being about three and a half and then by 12. So um, you can see this is a 12, in, 12 by 12 piece of paper. So if you wanna make them the size I did, um, you'll need to cut your paper. I already cut some um, to three and a half inches by 12, okay? Um, you're also going to need some a book page that you don't mind tearing up and gluing and ink distressing. Some type of um, plain paper that you can write on so you get that journaling space. I'm just using kind of a tan color uh, copy paper that I got. Um, I got it at a cons art consignment store. Uh, some type of um, ink to distress with. This is a Tim Holtz, I think, walnut um, stain. I used buttons for the closure, so you're gonna need some type of buttons and some type of twine or ribbon or lace. Um, I did stamp some sentiments um, on the inside, so you need some type of stamps if you wanna do that. That's optional. And again, you'll need uh, something to cut your paper with, scissors or a paper cutter. Um, a bone folder would be helpful to help crease your paper. You can just use your fingers. Um, I do tear paper, so a metal ruler is nice for that. And then adhesive. Um, I do like the art glitter glue. Um, it's one of my favorites. And I just put it in my little bottles to make my life easier. Okay, so we're gonna get started. Um, let's set some things aside. So again, I already cut my paper, and I don't think I cut it very straight, which is probably not a good thing, but um, we can always fix it. Um, so the first thing you want to do is, you know, decide what what size you want your um, your inserts to be. And I want mine to. I'm going to do these about the same size as what I um, showed you my prototype. So if you don't like to measure much, one one option is you can kind of, um, well, once you've done one, you can lay it up beside it like this. <laughs> and then, um, let's see what I do. And again, they don't have to be perfect, but you do, you wanna line them up straight. But as far as the exact size, if you notice, I think mine are, I mean, they're not exactly the same. See, this one's a little bit taller here. It's up to you. Um, but for those of you that do like measurements, I'm gonna crease these to make them nice and crisp. Um, let's see, the first section huh, was right about three inches. And then the second was five or at eight. So you could score it at three and at eight and then fold it up, okay? So that's your first step. Now, I do a lot of ink distressing on my projects. Uh, I like the vintage look. Um, and I also think it hides when things aren't exactly perfect. Um, and I'm okay with things not being exactly perfect. Ooh, I need a new um, little sponge on my distress tool, don't I? It's shedding on me. So I think most people, unless you're, you know, kind of new to this type of paper crafting, know how to ink distress edges, but I'll try to move through this part quickly. 
Um, what I do like to emphasize is, you know, you really can't mess it up. Um, it, it, it's just really what what is the look that you like and, um, you know, how much or little or even not at all. You don't even have to distress them at all. You, you could leave it regular or plain. Okay, so the next thing you're going to want to do is line the um, inside. And I, I chose to line mine with some book page. Now, um, I'm going to go ahead and just rip out two pages. And I'll show you how, again, how I do this. But um, I'm sure there's other ways to um, tear your book page. But I like using... Um, a lot of the text so I tend to pull the the edges or the margins off or rip them off now again so I don't have to measure too much I just kind of put my book page where I leave just a little bit of the white so I have a little bit of a framing for it and I line my ruler up to get it somewhat straight and you do want to you know hold, hold your ruler down um, and the page just rips off and look I've got it the right width, and now I just need to get it for this middle section the right height. Um, I did go ahead and do two pages, so now I have an extra for when I do another one, if I fold them about the same. So to save time, and this is another reason I was trying to fold them the same, I did go ahead and rip some and ink distressed the edges for each of these sections. So you just repeat that. Um, for each one, I think I did, let's see, I think I made some that would fit in each section. Look at me go. All right, just to save time on the video. Um, but paper tearing is fun. It's not hard. It's very difficult, again, to mess it up. And if you do, that's okay. Just um, grab another, grab a, another sheet and start again. Um, a lot of people have problems with um, tearing up books, and if you do, I apologize. Um, I tend to find mine. Um, I've gotten them at different yard sales, um, consignment shops, Goodwill, just different places, um, and... I figure turning them into art and something that's repurposed um, is better than going in the landfill. Um, but I am an avid reader, and so oftentimes what happens is I grab them not because of the titles or the content when I'm thinking about my art, but just do I like the font and the aging and the color of the pages or the way the paper feels, right? And then I get it home and I think, oh my goodness. And so then I do read it before. Um, and if it ends up being a favorite, then of course I don't tear it up. Um, but that's just my secret. But I've decided um, I can live with it. And even though I say a lot of these are vintage -y, I say they're vintage style because often the ones I'm doing are, they're not old, old books. Um, so again, I don't feel so guilty. Um, okay, and then the next thing that I like I want to do for this project is have journaling some something to write on because the whole point of these for me was for extra journaling space. So again, I was using this um, tan copy paper. Again, I found this um, at Scrap RVA, um, which is a scrap consignment store in the Richmond, Virginia area, um, which is where I live. So. Very excited about that. Let's see if I cut these to the right size. I did okay. I didn't do great. Um, I was trying to cut paper ahead of time so that um, the video wouldn't get too, too long. So, again, I feel like these are a little bit long. You, I used my paper trimmer, but you can also go back to your paper ripping technique like I just did there because I wanted... A little more of my book page to show and it just gives it a little bit of a rough edge and then the one I cut for up here is a little bit tiny 
So I'm gonna go back to my you don't have to measure method. And um, again, just show you sometimes how I craft because I find it enjoyable. There we go, I'm happy with that, the sizes of those. Okay. So now, again, personal preference, you can ink these edges. I think on these I didn't, honestly. I think I just put them in, you know, plain. So again, up to you. Again, to save time, I'm not gonna ink the edges this time. But I am gonna find a sentiment. Now, you can put your sentiment on any of the panels. Totally up to you. Um, let's go with creativity takes courage. These are a little Tim Holtz clear stamps that I've had for a long time and I use them a lot. And I picked creativity takes courage because I um, sometimes I get asked to do these videos and um, I get a little I get a little anxious. I'm like okay I think I can do this and I think everyone will like it. Um, so I'm gonna be courageous today. All right, so can you see that? Yeah, all right, so I think that turned out okay. And you know, you should clean your stamps after you use them. I'm not gonna demonstrate that right now. <laughs> okay, and I am gonna glue each of these down. Now I'd like to just say this art glitter glue really you're not going to have to worry about it um, coming loose so you don't have to use a lot it is a little more expensive but it is my favorite white wet glue all right okay and now I'm gonna down this last panel and um, you'll see how this is really starting to come together and like I said it's a pretty simple project okay so now of course you can always decorate these up um, a lot and really um, enjoy making them pretty you could add quotes or images on the front. I did keep mine the first time through pretty simple. Um, wanting um, them to just inspire some extra journaling. Um, I have lots and lots of buttons. Now I do usually try to find one that's going to be somewhat flat. Um, and on this size, I think, oh, those match. Um, you know, a lar it, it can handle the larger button, you know, with no problem. Um, but you could also, without, I think, without having a problem, go with go with a small button, you know. Um, again, personal preference, and I think any of these would look good. There's one that's a mother of pearl. Really like that. Um, I do like things that sparkle. So we're gonna go with the mother of pearl. Now, sewing on paper is similar to, um, you know, sewing on fabric. And I didn't mention you're gonna need a needle, some type of thread, which I didn't get ready, so. I am going to dig through my floss, but you could use just regular um, regular thread um, for this. I was thinking it might be fun to have some contrast. Um, just because we can. And I like pink. So I think the pink and the mother of pearl will be nice. I am gonna split this and just use a couple of the strands um, to make it go through a little bit easier. So, obviously, if I had been prepared, I would have 
and my needle and my thread ready to go. All right. Whoops, I had it threaded and I pulled it through. You don't have to forgive my fingers. They constantly have ink on them. Hmm. All right. Okay, and you do need a knot at the end, just like when you're sewing with paper, with material. Now, I, I line it up and decide, you know, where I think it'll look nice. Um, honestly, it doesn't have to be here at the edge, but I think I'm gonna put it there because I like it there. And um, I hold, hold it and use my needle to mark where I'm gonna poke the holes. And I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this on camera, but now I have the two holes, okay? And let me get my thread started. Ooh, it's interesting on the back, isn't it? All right. And I like the button not to be super loose or anything, but you do have to be able to get your twine up under there. Now this one's gonna be easy because of the shape of the button and then it's concave. Um, these others that are a little more flat, I just left a, just a little bit of give so that you can get your twine through there. So again, you just want to, I hope I'm staying in camera, everybody. Um, so your button on. Um, and because I like to make my my projects so that they can be used. <laughs> I, I try to make sure things are sturdy and sewn on well and aren't gonna fall apart. And that's why I like to use nice glue and things. Um, so I would, you know, go, go through quite a few times. Don't, don't be skimpy um, attaching your button because you don't want the person who ends up using this you have to um, sew it back on. Oh, the pink is kind of cute in there, isn't it? All right. Now, this is the other thing with your um, floss. Uh, you, you could actually use the pink um, to wrap it, or you can use one of the natural colors. Um, these are actually um, hemp cord for beading. Again, um, I got it at the the craft consignment store um, for a dollar. So, you know, I use what you have. Um, don't feel like you have to go out and buy something. If you've got embroidery thoughts and you like that, use it. Notice again, I'm not measuring. I just wrapped it around the button a little bit and then I'm gonna come up and then I'm gonna twist it around and I'm gonna cut it. Now this one's a little bit thinner than what I used previously. So, you know, you could also do, if you wanted to, a double wrap. You like how that looks? That's kind of nice. So I'm gonna stop there. Oh, look at that. Quick and easy. Um, and you just unwrap and you have um, extra space for your junk journal. All right, everybody. Well, I sure hope you liked my how-to tutorial and maybe you'll make some of these and let me know how yours turned out okay um if you haven't already follow me give the video a like and check out my instagram and my pinterest i really appreciate it and i hope y'all have a great day bye